So tonight I want to talk to you about faith. On Wednesdays we're talking about faith and favor. And uh, let, me, let me say this to you. Uh, sometimes people wonder about what we believe at Forecast for Life Church. First of all, it's kind of a, a weird name, isn't it? <laughs> but actually, the word forecast was given to me when I was at a really low point in my life where, where I couldn't even, even pray. I was having a hard time praying because uh, I, I was feeling so down and, and out. Yeah. And the Lord just planted that word forecast in my heart that I should believe him beyond the circumstances, kind of like Amen. the four-day weather forecast. Mm -hmm. You look ahead and you can see even though it's storming out or whatever's going on right in front of you, you have to sometimes look beyond that to the four-day forecast yeah. that's going to be sunny and bright and, and God's going to cause good things to come into your life. And, and it actually did happen. For me so uh, I won't go into a lot more about it but it was really dramatic how God reached in into my life so forecast for life yeah. and yeah. and that's a good thing so well, you know what some people want to know well what do you believe there well we believe in the Apostles Creed right yep. Amen. the Ten Commandments the, the whole entire Bible and, and beyond that, we don't believe anything beyond what the Bible says. Amen. Okay, we don't make up things. We don't have a lot of tradition. You know, I had, I had uh, a guy tell me one time, when I was, he wanted me to pray for him, and he said, I am so full of tradition. I don't, I don't know if I can get over it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can get over it, but, yeah. but you have to be radical on God's word. And, and, I, and if, if you want to live your life in peace and walk by faith, not by sight, you want to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh, you have to be radical nowadays because the whole world wants you to flow in sometimes religious tradition. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that will cause you to fail at gaining the peace that passes all understanding that God wants us to walk in, for sure, because you'll be double-minded. Amen. Yes. And uh, I'm not going to go into it, but we've got a lot of traditions that surround Christmas. Mm -hmm. Like, first of all, Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know whether you've been good or bad. <laughs> I, I don't care. There, Yes, there was, used to be a Saint Nick. I'm not going to teach this on Sunday because there's kids around. And I don't want to interfere, but, uh, you know, the whole world is believing that he, Santa Claus knows if you've been good or bad, if you've been naughty or nice, and he's going to give you coal in your stockings, or, and that's not true. He can't be everywhere all at once. So didn't, does the world make him like a god? Yeah, yeah they do. Yeah. Have no other gods before me. It's one of the Ten Commandments. So you have to be on guard, and you know what? Some people will say, you know, if, if I start on my soapbox, bah humbug. They'll say, you, you ought to wear a t-shirt that says bah humbug. No, I just want the word to work for me. Yeah. And I want the word to work when I pray for other people. Yeah. And if you do, then the other traditional stuff has to be put aside. Yes. And, and don't get me wrong, I mean, I have lots of relatives and, and <laughs> they're all involved in it. And I don't really say anything, but if they ask me, they better not ask me. Yeah, right. <laughs> or else I'll tell them the truth. Yeah. So, okay. So today we're talking about faith. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about this, that our faith is talking. Your faith, whatever your faith level is, or whatever faith you have in your heart, it's going to speak. Unfortunately, a lot of people have more fear 
in their, in their spirit man, then they have faith. Because yeah. they haven't been developing faith yeah. by the word of God. And, and that's so important. So if you would turn to Hebrews chapter 1. This, I, I can't say enough about this because if you're talking about faith, you have to talk about the word of God. There is no faith past the word of God or beyond it or besides it, just like there is no other Lord and Savior besides Jesus the Christ. And, and so we need to know what it takes for our faith to be working and we need to know that we are talking when we talk your faith is saying something <laughs> and I, I realize that a lot of churches would not go in for that uh, they think that it's something um, well let's put it this way a lot of people talk about the word of faith the word of faith. Well, the Apostle Paul said, I teach the word of faith. So what we have to do is we have to have a definition of what is the word of faith. Well, we'll get into that in just a minute. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. It says this, God, who at various times and various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. In other words, God always speaks through the prophets in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament. He always did. That's what's so wonderful about the New Covenant. After Jesus died and buried, rose again, sits at the right hand of the Father, all of us can hear the voice of the Father. We can hear His voice and what His will is for our life. So that's, that's so powerful and so wonderful. So now, verse 2, has in these days, these last days, spoken to us by his Son, or by Jesus, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. Who made the worlds? Jesus made the worlds. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the creator. Yes. And he is the sustainer of the whole world. Verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. What's he talking about? Jesus is the express image of God the Father. If you want to know what God the Father thinks and does and has his will, all you have to do is look at Jesus. He's the representative of God the Father. And upholding all things by the word of his power. Amen. Now right there, we have to stop for a minute. What does that mean? Some people might say, well, why doesn't he just say the power of his word? Because it's really the power, all the power of God is in his word. So when the word of God is spoken, you, you get the power. Because yeah. his power is in the word. the word. That's why it says the word of his power. Yeah. Amen. God doesn't do stuff outside of his word. Or let me, let me say that a different way because uh, God moves in miraculous ways. He moves with mercy and with grace even to people that don't know the word real, real, real good. Okay? But that is not the ordinary way that he wants people to live. That's why if you, when you first get born again, it seems like, wow, things happen. I got answers to prayer and now I, I've been a Christian for 20 years and it seems like nothing's happening. You know why? Because to whom much is given, much is required. So if you've been given an abundance of grace 
and abundance of mercy and you've been born again and now heaven is your home and you've been given the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and the name of Jesus and all these things, you should be growing. Yes. And, and so when, when I say sometimes I like to tell people, all you have to do is come to church and sit and soak up the Word of God and the power of God will come upon you. Yeah. Really, it's so easy. I, I, I told this to a, a person that was struggling with drugs. And he came for a few times and then he fell away again. But if you would just come and sit and listen, it's not that hard to sit, is it? No. <laughs> you can just come here and sit and these chairs aren't that uncomfortable they're pretty nice I know they're not your easy chair at home but they're still pretty nice and so you come to church and you feed your spirit on the word of God and if you do the power of God is going to come into your life and the word will change things amen the word of his power. And the word of his power, let's keep reading because this is so awesome. Who being the brightness, verse 3, of his glory and his express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. If Jesus' word is not going forth, everything is going to fall apart because he's upholding the whole world and the universe and everything else by the word of his power. Yeah. That's so awesome. If, you, if we all would get a glimpse of that, we would never doubt anymore. Yeah. If we would just believe this much, when he had by himself purged our sins, uh, this is awesome, he, Jesus, purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, Jesus is, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Amen. That's awesome. All the angels, all heaven and earth, Amen. is a being upheld by the word of Jesus. That's why, that's why we want to study his words mm -hmm. so much. Romans chapter 10, let's go there. And I'm going to show you a couple of things here about, you know, a lot of times we're talking about speaking God's word. That's why always we are saying a forecast confession of God's word because it's so powerful to speak his word. But on the other hand, People are speaking other things, and it's to your detriment. It's not to your blessing. It can cause havoc in your life if you're speaking and believing the wrong things. Romans 10, verse 8. What does it say? The word is near you and in your mouth and in your heart. That is the whole story of you being blessed in life. And on the other hand, that's why so many people are not being blessed because the word is not planted in their heart yes. and coming out their mouth. It's got to be in there so that it can overflow out of your mouth. I know that's what we talked about on Sunday, but I, I really believe digging deeper into it, you'll know the Word is near you. In other words, the Word of God is available to all of us. Amen. In America especially, I know in other countries maybe this isn't as true as it is here, but in America, nobody has an excuse. Right. I mean, I, I believe you could even buy a Bible in the dollar store. So there's no excuse. And besides that, there's a church on every corner, and I'm sure they would gladly help you get a Bible if you don't have one. So uh, the Word is available. It's here. It's near us. 
it's in your mouth and in your heart that is in parentheses in the New King James it says that is the word of faith so don't let anybody tell you what the word of faith is I know some people will go off on a tangent and they'll say somebody will say well I believe in the word of faith you know what they just said I believe that you have to believe in your heart and pray with your mouth mm -hmm. that's all you're saying that's what the Apostle Paul explained right here that this is the word of faith mm -hmm. believe in your heart and speak out of your mouth pray mm -hmm. out of your mouth and so many people will say this and I I really I cringe when I hear it because somebody will say well he's they'll hear somebody preach like what I just said was directly out of the Bible wasn't it yeah. well somebody walking by or somebody from some other kind of a denominational church would hear me say that and it, they might tell their friends well see there he's a prosperity preacher mm -hmm. that's a made-up term by unbelievers it, they made they just made it up and it's a derogatory statement it's not a blessing statement nobody that really knows the Word of God is going to say yes I am a prosperity preacher no I'm not I'm a preacher of the gospel of the Word of God of like Jesus said the kingdom of the gospel the gospel of the kingdom so and along with that might as well say it then also some of the unbelievers will tag different ones saying that they are the name it and claim it crowd mm -hmm. nobody that teaches the Bible is calling themselves name it and claim it they, they, they don't do that that's, that's labeled on them by somebody else yeah. okay enough of that Romans 10, 8, and 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, see there's the word of faith, confess and believe, and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. So everything that you want from God has to come out of your heart of belief Amen. out of your mouth as a form of a prayer or a confession of your God's word, a confession of faith all these different things it's got to be in your heart and prayed spoken believed, all those things it's just that, that simple it's a very simple thing mm -hmm. for with the heart one believes unto righteousness or right standing with God mm -hmm. and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation or you could say it like this believing and saying is covers everything not when you look up the word salvation let me let me just define it for you if you look it up and and I, you can look it up in a concordance you can look it up in uh, what are some of the <laughs> What are some of the other, uh, how you look up words? Bible dictionary. Bible dictionary. Uh, yeah. What's the other one that everybody concordance? quotes? Concordance, yeah. A thesaurus. Uh, yes. Well, here's what you'll find. Salvation covers a lot of things. Blessing and healing and safety. Yeah, the, the, salvation means a lot of things just like when you you know the Jewish people use the word Shalom yeah. I mean it, it means a lot of things all good things it's like you're praying a blessing for someone and that's what salvation is so that's so important what we say really determines how our life is going to go and I know some people start out and they've been they they have a lot of issues in their life the physical mental whatever but everything everything in your life is going to go better when you speak God's word yeah. for anybody 
regardless of how desperate their situation is. It's going to be better than saying, oh me, I'm so, you know, uh, <laughs> nothing ever is ever, ever, ever going to happen good in my life. Yeah. That's it. And that's why some people stay there when all the while, if they would believe and pray, they could be better, 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 better. Yeah. If not totally delivered. I mean, to say, say someone who is a drug addict or an alcoholic, as long as they keep confessing, declaring that I am an alcoholic, that's why I don't like, well, let's not get into that. Some of the organizations, yeah. I like the organization that will say, you are not that. That has you trapped, but that's not the real you. That's what I want to hear somebody say, that if you believe God, he will help you out of the addiction. Yes. Yes. You know, there's no sense of you confessing, I'm an alcoholic for the next 50 years. I know. You know, because you'll stay in the trap. Mm -hmm. You'll stay in that, that addiction. Mm -hmm. that, that trap that the devil has set for you. If you want to be out of that, rise above it, you're going to have to say something different. Then I'll never, some people say that about smoking. I can't quit. I never will be able to quit. I just, if you want to quit, you have to change what you say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know some people will say, I, I've heard lots of testimonies from people that, that did quit. And the, the way they quit is they had to say something different. Mm -hmm. So that's so important. Joshua chapter 6. Let's look at that real quick. Joshua chapter 6 is talking about the walls of Jericho. All of us know what that is. It's, it's the Jewish people. They needed to, to uh, bring down an enemy. And, and these people were held up in a very fortified fort. Really. And God said that they could take him. If you do things my way then you can take them. And if you look at verse 10, I just want us to zoom in on verse 10, Joshua 6.10. Now Joshua, because he had orders from God himself, now Joshua commanded the people saying, you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth. In other words, don't say anything. We're going to march around the wall, and you're not going to say a word until I give you the command. And then you're going to shout, and we're going to praise, and we're going to blow the shofars and all that kind of stuff. And that's the only time you should speak up. The lesson there is sometimes people determine their own outcome with wrong words. It would be better sometimes to clam up rather than saying, oh man, oh man. Things, terrible things have happened and they're just getting worse and worse. No, see, so uh, God knows that. God knows that you're going to, it's going to spill out of your mouth. Whatever is in your heart is going to come out. And so sometimes it would be better, don't talk. Because what if they were marching around the wall? Just imagine yourself. Joshua tells them, to go, you're going to be marching around the wall. And they're probably saying, why are we doing this? What, has Joshua lost his mind? I don't think this is going to work. I don't believe this is the right thing to do. Isn't that what people would do? Oh, yeah. They start making up their own words. So God knew, told Jack, tell the people, don't say a word. It's a Bible principle. Just, and, and, and there's some history here too. We already know when God promised the people that they could go into the promised land, mm -hmm. what kept them out? Complaining. As Moses, he's lost his mind. We don't, he got us out of the, Egypt, but now he's got us in the desert. He's, a, he's nothing. We should be back in Egypt. We'd be better off. 
this is what's coming out of their mouth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he's telling them, be quiet, be quiet. Mm -hmm. James chapter 3, we'll close with James chapter 3. But this, this continues, really, I could talk about... I could talk about Daniel. I could talk about David. They all were given a lesson about speaking things out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. The way D David defeated the giant was his words. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that some other time. James chapter 3. And actually, if you look at the New Testament after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, James was the first New Testament book to be written. And James was the half-brother of Jesus. Amen. He grew up with Jesus. I think he knows about words, don't you? Well, here's what he said in verse 6. James 3, 6. We, we should really, to do this justice, we should read right from verse 1. But we have, we're short on time, so let's just read verse 6. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body. Your words, your mouth, your, your speech, your prayers, your talking can cause a fire in your life. And it, and it talked about before this that a tongue is like a rudder of a big ship. It'll steer the, the big ship even. It will steer your life in the right direction or the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire by hell. In other words, if the devil can get a hold of your tongue and getting you to speak things opposite of the word of God, He's got you. That's why Proverbs says that, that the words of your mouth is like a trap, a snare. Yeah. They will snare you. They'll get you caught in a trap. Your own words. And so a lot of times I, I don't judge people. I'm not saying that. I try real hard not to judge people. But when I talk to somebody for the first time, I can usually tell where they stand on the Word of God Amen. because they'll start talking. People will talk. If you listen, you'll know where they're coming from. And you can probably tell, well, this guy grew up in a certain denomination and he's filled with tradition because that's what he'll say. That's what he'll talk about. Yeah. I know some, and I'm not coming down on any particular denomination, but they all have their favorite traditions. And I'm talking about even the spirit-filled ones, the Assemblies of God and the, you know, all Church of God and all these different ones that, that say they're filled with the Holy Spirit. And they are. I, I'm not saying they're not. But, but they have so many traditions that nullify the Word of God. Yeah. Just because uh, somebody said this one time, Grandma taught it, and I bought it. <laughs> because, well, this is what, you know, this is the way Grandma always said things worked. Well, if Grandma said it out of the Word of God, then you can believe it. But if she just told you her tradition, it's like uh, Andrew Womack, when he was just a really young preacher, he was doing some painting to, for income. He painted and he was in this one lady's house, and and uh, she asked him, "Are are you one of the are you one of those guys that are filled with the Spirit?" He says, "Yes, ma'am, I am." And he started talking to her, and, and she said, "Well, we don't believe that in our church." And he says, "Well, it's in the Bible." And the lady says, "Well, there's a lot of things in the Bible that we don't believe." Yeah. <laughs> And it's true, really, if somebody would really be honest, this lady was being honest. There's all kinds of things in the Word of God that people just don't believe because of their tradition. And um, so that's a...
that's a long subject in itself. But the fact is that we identify ourselves with God and his word, or we identify ourselves with tradition. I, I remember, I could tell you lots of stories about my mom. She's in heaven now, so I can talk about her. <laughs> but she used to like to give our kids uh, presents at Christmas, and she'd always write, from Santa. I'd say, Mom, you put on that package, from Grandma. This is not from Santa, this is from Grandma. Oh no, not going to do it. Not going to do it. And she never did it. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that will hold you back. What you believe in your heart matters. It, it's just not that important to go the way of the world. I mean, really, uh, if you go back in time, people like the Greeks, they have hundreds of gods. There's a god for everything. And really, to be honest with you, the things that have transferred into the Christian church have come from a lot of beliefs from the Greeks. The Greek, the Greek had a god of, of uh, uh, income, a god that causes blessing in your life, and a, and a god that if you don't please this god, he'll cause calamity to come into your life. And, I mean, they had a god for everything, the moon god and the sun god and the well, gods they made up. We have our own gods. The Indians. And they're, yeah, it's, uh, we have our own gods too. We have the gods of sports celebrities and movie stars and uh, that we put up on a pedestal and be, I mean people I, it interests me all the time when I, I I'll get a glimpse on TV of some kind of a concert and this includes Christian concerts too you know they got their 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 lighters or their cell phone and they're waving it back and forth are they worshiping who are they worshiping? That's right. <laughs> I don't think it's God, to tell you the truth. They love the music, whoever it is, and they're actually worshiping the people up on stage. Mm -hmm. So what is worship? You have to define worship. Mm -hmm. Are you giving it all of your attention? Some people worship music in the church. Mm -hmm. I know people and i got to cut this off or else I'll just keep going and going and going. <laughs> but I know people, they go to church, and because the worship team is so wonderful, they'll come for the worship and they'll enjoy the worship and all that, and then they'll leave church after worship. Mm -hmm. No word whatsoever. Yeah, right. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Yeah. He didn't say, if you continue in Christian music, the music will give you the truth, and the, and the music will set you free. Jesus never said that. That's right. So, I mean, I, I'm all for worship. We need to thank God. I mean, that's the most powerful thing. One of the most powerful things you can do is give thanksgiving out of your mouth, from your heart. And that's what worship is. But, but uh, some of it is borderline compromise with the Word of God. Yes, it is. Okay, praise.